Welcome back! I will finish up the Holy Trio discussion with the hedge funds. If you didn't catch my video on private equity and venture capital, be sure to watch them on the upper right corner. Most of you know hedge funds invest in stocks and bonds, but there are other assets that they invest in such as currency and commodity futures. There's also an emerging business model called crossover funds that invest in both public and private assets. I will use a single manager longshore hedge fund as an example. If you're interested in learning more about the other styles, I have included the link to my equity investing primer video in the description. In terms of entry points, most typical paths are from investment banking and sell side equity research. There are some private equity professionals who want to move into a hedge fund and their background is actually heavily favored by some of the most elite hedge funds in the world, such as a tiger cub. Management consulting can be a decent background as well to get into hedge fund. Maverick Capital, which is a tiger cub, is very vocal about its receptiveness to hiring McKinsey consultants. I definitely get a lot of assess my profile type question. Look, if you have other backgrounds, I think you can overcome your lack of relevant experience by proving you have the tangible research skills via actionable stock ideas. So if you work in a big four consulting or in corporate finance or less relevant roles, there is no better way to proving you have the passion and the skills to do the job than showing via tangible work products. Hedge fund org structure is very flat. As a research analyst, typically you have no idea generation responsibility. Your portfolio manager or senior analyst will give you ideas to look at. Well, of course, if you have ideas that you think fit your firm's style, by all means, pitch it to them and see how they respond because that's eventually your responsibility anyways. The goal of your day-to-day -day centers around forming a view on whether the stocks you're looking at are a buy, short, or a pass. So your day-to-day -day is to read, do financial modeling, talk to people, and that means expert networks, sell side analysts, company investor relations, company management, industry contacts, etc. In this profession, you're not going to get a lot of directions, which is good or bad depends on your work style. The typical instruction will be, hey Richard, take a look at this company. Let's catch up later this week to talk about what you think. And that's all. That's all the instruction you're going to get. And that's why they don't hire straight out of college because you are expected to have baseline skills and a process to get to a conclusion without much guidance. And then there's maintenance work. Over time, hopefully your PM will buy or short stocks that you have looked at. You will be responsible for following news and big movements for those stocks and provide timely updates on the thesis to your PM. And then you progress to senior analysts. They still research stocks, but they can delegate some of the data gathering and analytics to the junior analysts as they are more focused on generating ideas and pitching them to the PM. If you are consistently making money for the PM as a senior analyst, Analyst. You progress to portfolio manager, likely not at the current firm, but somewhere else. All the stock picking funds portfolio manager started as a research analyst. So they could be working on ideas on their own as well. But also they listen to the idea pitches from her team and decides whether and how much capital is put behind those ideas. She's also responsible for risk control, position sizing, and deciding net exposure, factor risk, how is the portfolio constructed based on her view on the macro outlook. Finally, she represents the firm in fundraising and manages the non-investment people as well, and that will be the CFO, head of IR, etc. In terms of compensation, there is no standardization other than saying it's pretty good. The biggest mistake I see people make is deciding on offers based on which fund pays a higher base salary or even compare it against investment banking, which has much worse work-life balance and less compensation upside. Just know that now that your base salary won't increase dramatically even at established funds as you progress to become a senior analyst and portfolio manager. That's not where the action is at. For base pay at a decent sized fund, 150,000 for a research analyst, 200 to 250,000 for a senior analyst. No idea for the portfolio manager because in a single manager, technically the portfolio manager is the founder, so they can pay themselves whatever the hell they want. 
but the bonus is really where the action is at. Sad reality is a single manager hedge fund is still not a true meritocracy. Your bonus is at the mercy of the generosity of the founder. The junior research analysts are paid a discretionary bonus decided by the PM. In a good year, making 300 to 400,000 all in is not unheard of. Senior analysts bonus can be tied to the fund's overall profit, not a percent of their specific contribution. I've heard numbers ranging from 3 to 5% of the profit. Let me give you an example of a $1 million all in comp year for a senior analyst. Assume the fund has $1 billion asset under management with a 220 fee structure and the fund generated a 10% return for the year. That means $100 million of value creation to the LPs for which the fund makes a 20% performance fee, resulting in a bonus pool of $20 million. Assume the senior analyst gets a 4% share of the bonus pool. That will be $800,000 bonus for the year. Adding the $250,000 base gives a all-in comp of just over a million dollars. And after giving the crumbs to the junior analyst and the senior analyst, the portfolio manager keeps the rest. There are two factors that impact hedge fund bonus. One, asset under management per investment professional. Two, funds performance. The quality of the portfolio manager is critical for both vectors. Most PMs are only good at one of the two. They're either good at making money, which is a good thing, or good at raising money, but they're not good at both. Hedge fund investors can exit too many paths as long as you network and pitch your experience right. Typical exits I've heard are entrepreneurship, corporate strategy, or going back to the sell side if they came from the sell side, or become allocator at an endowment or the pension fund, or work in investor relation. The good thing about hedge fund is 60 hours a week on the job is pretty decent work-life balance. It's also a comp. So keep on watching. The profession has the highest compensation upside and the quickest path to progression for those who perform. And the drawback is it's highly stressful. There is no stability at all. You can have a zero bonus year or even worse, the fund can go out of business and you will be out of a job. 60 hours a week is a total illusion. To become a great investor depends on your raw intelligence. You need to put in more hours. So you're never really unplugged from trying to generate another idea or learning about another business model, or finding another trade setup. And finally, public equity investing is secularly declining, and that includes hedge funds. Most of the institutional investor money is flowing into either private equity, or venture capital, or whatever is not invented yet. But it's not hedge funds. If you want to go from hedge fund to venture capital, first, you should be covering high growth sectors to have a shot. You can try to land at a public equity role at a crossover fund and see if you can network into the private side. If the fund is organized where the public and privates are siloed as their own teams. Or you can network yourself into a VC fund, but it's unlikely to be Sequoia or Kleiner Perkins. Getting into private equity will be very difficult. It's not a two-way street between hedge funds and private equity. Without investment banking experience, you lack the transactional knowledge that is beyond just researching the business or making a call on the valuation. You can network into investment banking and try private equity after doing IB for a few years. Or you can try doing an MBA and then do IB associate and then try private equity after a few years. Every optionality here is predicated on you having real IB work experience. If you found this helpful, please hit like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for future contents. I'll talk to you next week. Peace.